Getting motivated. Um, I'm covering this topic because, quite simply, it's the right time. Um, we're just getting through dealing with the loss of my father-in-law from illness, death, and the financial issues that come with them. all of that, along with my work contract recently finished. And so for me, I have needed a bit of a reboot myself. You probably notice on the wall behind me over here, there's a new whiteboard. You may not tell the difference, but this whiteboard is actually bigger than the other ones. The kids have run off with the other ones. Um, got tired of them the wiping everything so they could draw pictures. So I bought another whiteboard and left them with their own. Uh, but the, the point being is, over the last week, it's been quite a stressful and emotional time for the family. Um, and I could feel myself even, you know, come quite... Um, I can take the knocks, let's just put it that way. But it, you feel a bit down. And I could feel that, you know, you're let, letting things bring bring you down because you it just feels like a bad time because obviously it is. But what I do is, and what I did is... A reboot. Uh, what I with this, what you do is you simply, well, in this case, went out, bought a whiteboard, stuck it on the wall, um, listed all the things that I can control and what I need to do, um, and then start focusing on that. Um, as you can see, it's opposite the bed, so it's the first thing I see in the morning. But it's quite simply a kick up the backside for myself and I advise everyone else to do the same as well. You know, if you have these things that are sort of like, oh, don't know, don't want to deal with it, can't deal with it, you've got to separate what you can do and what you can't do. The first thing is, I couldn't control what happened with my father-in-law in the sense that I could only deal with the finances, make sure they support everybody. Um, but I'm not a doctor. I'm not a surgeon. I can only control the aspects I can control. And that is where you get that separation. Because in this case, I can offer the finances, I can offer support, but I cannot <laughs> carry out surgery or anything else. And it was just a situation we couldn't actually do a lot about. Um, and this goes throughout people's lives, whether it's relationship breakups, whether it's um, financial problems, whether it's dealing with something personal like a health issue. There are certain aspects you can control and certain aspects you can't. If you have an illness, for example, that may even be long term, and you can either accept it is what it is and do what you can to get the most out of life, or you can sit there and feel sorry for yourself. Um, that is a prime example of the two. You know, you can control how you live the rest of your life. It's either in a positive way or in a negative way. Now, that is it. Um, you've got no control over what's actually happened to your health, but you've got control over your life. You've got control over everything else. Um, and that's, that's why, you know, I like meeting people that um, have had some pretty horrific things over time. But it's their way of dealing with things that I find fascinating and interesting and um, so upbeat. Because it doesn't matter what life throws at them, they found a way through it. Not that I specifically know looking for people that have had a hard time. It's just that when I do come across these people, I do find that they're on the right track. Because it doesn't, it's nothing to do with money. It's nothing to do with personal wealth in that sense. It's all about happiness and enjoying life around them, appreciating everything they've got, etc., etc. Now, with finances, a lot of people bury their heads in the sand. They don't want to deal with the real problem, which is, they're overspending, they're in too much debt, it's out of control. Here is the hard facts with finances. Financial institutes 
do not want you to go bankrupt. Bankrupt is zero. You go back to zero. You're not going to pay all your debt off. You're not going to pay all the interest. You'll go back to zero. They may take your house and everything you own um, that they deem has a value, but once it goes to zero, there's nothing left to take. They do not like the word bankrupt. What they want to see is repayments. They want to see that you're going to contribute to what you owe, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Bear in mind, they've always been having interest off you anyway. They've always been getting the money back. You don't really owe them as much as you think um, because obviously they've had money off you ongoing for a long period of time. So what you need to look at is you can contact them and say, I can't afford this. I simply can't afford it. Making those positive steps, they will go, whoa, they want to talk to us because there's a problem. And they will help you. They do not want you to go bankrupt. They're scared of that. But I do know that when you get the, the demand letters and stuff on the doorstep and that, you, you dread the postman. You dread um, seeing how much you owe or whatever. You need to get out of that zone. You need to be focusing on what you can control. You can call these people. You can say, this is too much and I can't afford this. Can we work something else out? You can also look at um, places like Citizens Advice Bureau in the UK and you know wherever you are, there'll be something that will help you with finances. That is the reality. Last thing they want is no communication and bankruptcy. They want you to pay off the debt. Well, they want to keep you in debt, ideally, but they, they want their money at the end of the day. So if you can focus on getting rid of your debt, that will take the weight of the world off your shoulders. <coughs> but the focus is on what you can control, which is the communication, and you can work out what you can realistically afford. You can control that. Now, that's throughout life the like divorce there's certain things in divorce you have zero control over um, for example if you know the lawyer is going to cost more than the, the value of what you've got in the house it may even pay just to say there's the keys and give it away because as a guy um, you often are picking up the bloody bill anyway um, but the the point being is you need to detach from the emotion side when it comes to divorce and things like that. You need to detach from that side. You can't control certain aspects of it. Don't focus on, I hate them or whatever. <laughs> you, what, what you need to focus on is, how do we get this through this process as cheaply and amicably as possible? Um, because you can fight things in court, but the only people that seem to win is the lawyers. And the emotional strain on everybody involved, the, the kids, the, the, the adults, etc., it just isn't worth it um, for most people. Uh, but I also would say that the UK, with its uh, view on who looks after the kids, is beyond me in an equality world um, that they believe that the kids are better off with the mother and that's sort of what when, when's equality equality um but the i'm not getting into that too much but it, on that aspect there is certain things you can control and other things you can't one of the things i'm not a fan of is like the child courts the child courts are not really um for your benefit they're basically from my own opinion and from what i can read and see um, to avoid the state becoming responsible for the other partner not paying their way. Um, in other words, if they become the stay-at-home person, then you will pick up the tab. That's what I've seen. You know, from my personal experience, it's it's not a good thing. So the whole point is, you need to work out something amicably, and you will get the bitterness come out. Um, what you need to do is actually just sit there and go, right, whatever. I'm not getting into this. You know, we need to make this amicable. Let's just move on. Move past the, the arguing and all that stuff because it ain't going to fix it. The relationship's not going to fix. The um, It's not going to make the divorce any simpler. 
is just going to complicate things. Some stuff you can control, like I'm saying, you can control how you deal with it, removing the emotions, because if it's that clear cut, you're going for the divorce, then emotions are better off on the shelf, um, away from it, uh, because that's where people make a lot of mistakes, in my opinion. They, they, they end up with a lot, a lot of expensive mistakes because instead of focusing on what they can control and what they can do, they get tied up on personal things like who gets the dog or something like that, you know, where it's like, is it really that big a deal? I know some people go, yes, it is. But I'm just, you know, from my opinion, is it really? really? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you've got to reboot sometimes. You've got to change your focus from the frustrations into something positive. There is an example of this actually come up on, I think it was Saturday. Friday night, Saturday, because we went out for a meal and I got some messages off a customer of mine. He he wanted he needed to download something, um, but he couldn't do it. I don't think he could work the links out and couldn't log in and whatever. But he didn't say that. He was saying, I, I want a refund. I want this. I want that. And I'm like, that's going to cost me $20 and a charge back. And it's, you know, plus you're losing the sale as well. So I sent him some more links, and then I didn't get any response. Saturday morning I got up, and there's all this, like, ah, oh, yeah, really, blah, 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 blah. The guy's really annoyed. So I thought, oh, hang on a minute. I'm not going to get annoyed at him. Let me stand back a bit. He, I get the feeling he doesn't know how to do this. So I simply rewrote it, what he had to do in a very simple process way so that he could simply just like follow it down the screen. Like literally don't have to think at all. And within an hour, I got an email back saying, thank you at work this morning. <laughs> that was it. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you got to separate what you can do and what you can't. Well, leading with emotions that the guy was already annoyed and arguing, you could have been argumentative back, but the reality was, he didn't know what he was doing on the computer side, so I just simplified it. I said, look, just try this. If you're not happy after this, I'll refund you the money. Simple as that. I've no problem. But it's like, thanks, great, that worked. <laughs> Off you went, happy as Larry. Um, so, yeah, keeping yourself in a positive mindset is extremely important. But also, if you feel that you're slipping into a negative one, you need to turn around and reboot. Like I said, do something like this. It, you don't have to have a big whiteboard on your wall. It works well for me because I write things down. Then I'll, as I finish them, I'll delete them. And then if I've got an alteration, I'll update it because that's how I generally work. I have a big board on the wall. I have a notebook in front of me and I'm constantly doing stuff. I have lists of different things because like on there, say I was going to do YouTube videos. On there, it'll say, Matt, do some YouTube videos. But on here, there'll be like 20 ideas of what should be in the videos. Um, that's how you need to focus. You need to get onto that positive thing. And like I said, if somebody's arguing with you, just go, okay, what, what is the problem? You know, is it that they have an issue with you, an issue with a product, an issue with um, something that's happened to them during the day? Step, stepping back a little bit, you can turn around and go, Okay, what's what's the what's the problem? Because you've de detached your emotion to it in the, in the negative way, which is somebody shouting at you, you shout back. But the response is much better to be okay. Why is he shouting at me? And instead of going, why are you shouting at me? Ask okay, what seems to be the problem? You know, I know still went on for two minutes, but once you actually say okay, well let's deal with it, and then it changes. And I find in business it works so well. The amount of things I fix by simply listening to people and getting people that are frustrated with things to sit down and just go, tell me what you need, tell me what you want, and tell me what the problem is. We'll work from there. No need to be shouting around. Just tell me exactly what is the issue here. And then when you start working through it, you find that there's a lot of people can often be like that. They're, they're not actually touching base because they're all annoyed with each other. But when you sit there and go, well, I need this and I'm not getting it. So you get, okay, 
I'll deal with that for you. You go and speak to somebody in accounts that doesn't want to talk to them anymore because they've argued that much, and then you find out, well, they can't get the accounts done because there's another problem in the purchase order side or whatever. You can start to fix the problem. But once people stop communicating, it all unravels. Thanks for watching.